Happy Monday, everybody. Still quarantining, working from home. Uh, let's see, trying to set up uh, a few more things in OBS for my stream. So I've got the uh, chat alert box going. Let's see if that works. Mm -hmm. Chatty is slow. Come on, Chatty. All right, sounds like sound is going through all right. I don't know why Chatty's being so slow to start up. There it goes. Alright, now theoretically. Hey Brian, continue again. Theoretically, my chat stuff should show up in the stream. I'm seeing a lot of lag. I don't know, what's going on here? Dallas is now alive. Forgive me for a minute, I'm just trying to make sure everything's streaming okay. Alright, there's my testing thing. Oh, looks good. Alright, so here's what I see. Here's my new stream thing. Let me know if that's too annoying that that's overlaid slightly on the Visual Studio you know, desktop background image there. I'd like for the chat to show up so that it's available in the YouTube afterward. Alright. Um, okay, so today I would like to work on proxy design pattern. Tiger Schnecke, nice to meet you. Hi. Schnecke. That sounds German. Alright, so I've got a, uh, a Pluralsight course that I'm working on on the proxy design pattern. And I want to work on the demos. I figure I can do those on stream and that will help me, uh, you know, stay focused on this and not get distracted by Twitter and other things. And also, you know, have it be a little bit more interactive. Maybe help some of you see what my thought process is on some of these things. Generally, I like to test drive um, this type of thing, so I'll probably be writing some unit tests. Uh, there's a few different types of proxies that I'm going to cover in the course. So you can see there's folders here for each one. Um, the first one I'm working on is a protective proxy. So a proxy uh, object that will be responsible for protecting access to some type. And I've come up with this document type um, as a starting point. <clears throat> My idea is that, uh, you know, depending on who you are, you would have access to perform certain actions on this document. So this is totally just a placeholder, and we'll work on, you know, adding some additional functionality to it, and then locking down who has access to that functionality. So um, one of the hardest things when coming up with, with training material is figuring out a reasonable demo uh, that is both complex enough to be interesting and not just a hello world, but also small enough that, you know, it doesn't take too much time to develop it. And it's also, you know, easy for the, the student to comprehend without you having to spend a, an inordinate amount of time explaining the domain to them. Uh, and so my idea with this document is that there might be roles like an author or an editor uh, or things like that, and they would be able to change certain things. Um, so maybe the best thing to do to start would be to come up with kind of what my requirements might be for this thing, uh, and then go from there. So my original thought with this, the reason why I called it a document, like an article, is that it would also potentially be uh, like a Word doc or a PDF or something that might be uploaded uh, to some file system or blob storage. 
uh, I'm not sure I need to deal with that complexity at all in, in this model, right, to, to deal with the pattern. So I don't want to have like a web front end or uploads or any of that stuff. Uh, and so I'm just going to represent whatever the content is as the string. And so that string content, you know, is, is sort of a, a stand-in for possibly a file upload or a PDF or whatever. Um, so if we think about use cases here for just a second, and this will maybe guide what we want to do, uh, use case one would be something like uh, author can create a new document and an author can name the document uh, add to its content and uh, assign initial tags and author can submit document for review by an editor Okay, let's say that's basically what an author can do. Now an editor can edit tags, let's say, and an editor can mark the document reviewed, which sets date reviewed. Um, editors probably shouldn't modify content directly, so let's say editor cannot modify name or content directly. We'll say that they've got some mechanism for providing feedback. Um, and that's probably good enough. And then later on, you know, maybe, maybe add an admin who can do anything, you know, later if, if we get to that. Okay. So if we look at this document, we want to be able to use these types of roles. Uh, maybe the first thing we need is to define those roles. And that could just be an enum uh, in this case. So we'll just have an enum roles. And we'll come up with some reason why enum is not the right choice for this later. But as a simple thing, we'll just start with that. Um, and we probably want to have some way of knowing who is in which role, uh, perhaps. Or maybe the document doesn't care. The document just cares about the roles of the person uh, that's coming in. And <clears throat> I suppose it's possible in a real system for a person to be in both an author and an editor role. Uh, but but for now, we'll we'll leave it there. So what's Schnecke, Tiger? I know Eka is corner, but I'm assuming Schnecke is not related to that. Um, all right, so we'll want some methods on here to do things. So my initial properties here obviously make this more of a DTO than a proper entity. Uh, it has no encapsulation right now. It's totally accessible by anyone at any time with all the, all the setters and everything. So I think I probably want to give it an ID. Uh, so it's an actual entity if I ever wanted to save it. So we'll just give it a private int ID uh, get and that's probably all it needs is a get. Uh, well, no, I don't need a private set. Private set, there we go. So now if we were using something like Entity Framework, it would be able to specify the ID. Um, name, similarly, we want these to be private set, I think. Uh, we'll just start with that for now. They're going to change. Date created can default to the current time, so let's do date time dot utc now perhaps uh, and then we can private set that one as well and same thing for this one okay now we're going to probably want to change some of those to be protected and some of them to be virtual as well but let's wait until we need to do that before we have to do that so what are some of the operations <clears throat> that we would want to do well we want an author to be able to create a new document so what is an author? Well, there's somebody that's in a particular role. So let's create another class that's going to be our, our author. And we'll just say public class, mm, employee, person, user. Let's say user. That's probably the most ubiquitous. Uh, and we'll give this user a, uh, well, for simplicity for this demo, we'll say they can only be in one role. They're either an author or an editor. So we'll give them a public string name because why not? Uh, and we'll give them a public uh, roles role like that. 
And now I can create a user and it can be in a role. Uh, and from there I can have them do things with the document. Okay, so now let's write some tests. So eventually I'm going to pull these things out into different class or into different files. Um, but for now, let's just uh, think about putting everything in this one file and we'll pull it out in a minute. So because I've got my requirements right here, that can, those can be my initial tests. All right, so I can say public class, um, hmm, how would a user create a document? Would that be a method on the user to do that, I wonder? Or do I just want to write some code? Like, what's the client code look like for a user creating a document? Probably an add document method or something like that, right? So, um, public void add document. And then to create that document, we would just need to give it some basic information like document name, document content. We can always add the tags later. Um, and maybe this user has a list of documents. That sounds fine. Well, let's see. If they're an editor, they might have different documents. Maybe they don't need that. Well, we'll start with this. We'll say they have authored documents. I feel like this almost needs to be an author and not a user. Um, but we'll leave it like this. And we'll give us a new list of documents. All right. So when we add a document, we would want to create the document and add it to the list. So now I can write a test. Now I can say public class user add document. Uh, and then I can do a X unit fact. Nope, nope, nope. Give me that X unit. There we go. Public async task. May as well make them async. Uh, because why not? And user add document adds document to authored documents. Well, we'll not say it's a collection, we'll just do that. Alright. Um, actually, this is going to be easier without async because there's nothing async going on here. There's not going to be any actual IO, so we'll just make this public void. Okay, so I need an author. So we'll say var author equal new user. And this user should be in a certain role. Uh, so we'll give it that role of author. There we go. And we'll say that's our arrange. Now our act is going to be author.add document test name test content and then finally we're going to want to assert contains our expected collection is author dot author documents and our predicate um, or item do an item verifies contains a given object I guess be document equals. Uh, I don't have the document that I want. I guess we'll say doc dot. Uh, what do I call it? Name or title? What is your type? Document. It has a name. So doc dot name. equals test name. I'll have to pull that into a variable in a minute. So why did I not get IntelliSense on that, I wonder? Alright, so that built. I'm still not sure why that didn't get IntelliSense, but let's run our test. And it fails, shockingly, because we haven't done anything here yet. So save our document equals new document name equals document name and content equals document content 
And you won't like any of that because these are inaccessible from user. Um, so probably I need a constructor on document to allow for that. And the constructor should take in a string name and a string content. And should assign those. Control dot all the things. And that gives me now the ability to do that. Let's clean these up. Okay, so now instead of this, this should just be a constructor like that. And that creates it, uh, but my test is still not going to pass until I say author documents dot add document. Right now, we can run that, and it works. All right. Next, we'd want to say that the author can name the document, add to its content, assign initial tags. So let's create another one of these. And user add document, that's no longer what we're doing. We're now going to modify the name. User can update the name of the document, modify its content, and assign tags. Okay. So how would the user do that? Um given that they have a document in their collection, they try and modify it, they would be able to pass along who they are in some fashion. And that method probably belongs over here on the document, right? So document might have something like public void update name, string new name, uh, user user right and so this would be who is actually performing the operation um, and now we're going to put the functionality on the document itself likewise update description and update tags would be done similarly so let's start with name so for that let's not copy that out let's copy this whole class and say document We'll go ahead and pull this to another type. We'll pull this one to another type as well. And roles can get out of here. All right, so now we're looking at document, update name, um, updates name, given user in author role. All right. Now, probably we want to also say something about whether or not the user actually owns this thing and isn't just an author of some other article or document. But for now, let's just do this. So we're going to create an author still. We're also going to create a document. Like that. And then we're going to call... Um, document dot update name to new name with the author and we're going to assert do I ever use exorcism dot I, I have yeah crownless leo um, as just a thing to to practice yes well, there's a lot more people here on a Monday than I usually get on a Friday. And this wasn't even one of my regular scheduled times. I'm imagining some of that's because of the uh, lockdown, right? All right, so now I want to assert that we get the new name, right? So assert dot equal. I'm expecting it to be new name. And my actual should be document dot name. And we'll run this and see if it works, which I'm sure it won't. Yes. Next, yeah, I've done. I've done that. Also, do Project Euler. Also, just uh, last Friday, I was streaming about uh, doing a bot for a coding game, 
which was kind of fun. Why are you not seeing this at a test? Test Explorer. Do you see it as a test? Oh, there's a bunch of them. Proxy. There it is. Document update name. All right, run that test. Code lens is not working for me. All right, and that fails. Expected actual not there. Okay. Don't need that. Don't need that. So here we are. Um, so what should we do here? Well, we want to say name equals new name. Like that. And then that should allow my test here to pass. Bam. Okay. Now, the whole point of this is that we want to have the logic of who can do what not be cluttering up the document itself. And so we want to have a proxy that protects the document. And we want document to just be, you know, pretty easy to use and, and be only focused on managing the document's behavior. I've been trying to get it running, Primeless Leo says, but my file directory stuff is scuffed, so I have to find a way to run it without the typical commands. For exorcism? Yeah, I don't know anything about uh, troubleshooting it, I'm afraid, sorry. I have used it, but not, I'm not an expert at it at all. Okay, so this document update name, this is sort of the happy path, and that works. Um, update name, given user, no, right, so there is a user, they are in the author role, so that's fine. What should it do when they're not? Uh, well, it should probably throw some exception, or it should otherwise indicate failure. Uh, so let's say um, update name throws... Uh, unauthorized exception given user not in author role so here's this person they're going to be in roles dot editor uh, we'll call them an editor and they're still going to have this document and you can try to update the name with the editor does it keep buffering um could uh, could be not you could be my home internet connection is not as good as my fiber at the office. So if that's the case, I apologize. <coughs> not sure what I can do about that, except maybe try and modify the settings for how much uh, bitrate I'm using. Play buffer, recording... Yeah, I don't want to mess with the bitrate too much because I don't want it to be like hindering the quality unnecessarily. Um, I could probably change the frame rate to be lower. Is that something I can tweak? Videos. Yeah, I have to turn off video to be able to mess with it. I don't want to stop streaming to mess with it. So my hope is that this is not totally unusable for folks. Um, but if it, if you're having real problems, let me know in the chat. If nothing else, maybe I'll I'll restart with a lower resolution. And this will be on YouTube later, so if you're keen to check it out later on YouTube. Um, does my bot tell them where my YouTube channel is? No. Well, it's YouTube slash Ardellis. YouTube.com, like Ardellis. So you'll see the one I just did last Friday is already out there. And here's the URL for it. All right. So, apologies again if, if the quality of the stream is suffering. It might just be a matter of my um, available bandwidth. Alright. So, we want to assert that this is going to throw. So, this is going to be assert.throws and uh, in, I don't know what, what exception here we're going to throw. But we're going to try and do that, like that. And my exception should be something like insufficient privileges or something like that. Hmm. Is the buffering making it impossible to enjoy the stream? Because I can do that if I need to. 
I figure since you're all here, none of you are all running away screaming that uh, it can't be that awful. But I could be wrong. Maybe you're just gluttons for punishment. Alright, so let's think about what exception this should be. Um, unauthorized access exception? That'll do for now. So we'll do that. Uh, get rid of that. And now we're getting close to the point where we can actually use our proxy. Alright, so uh, let's run this test. All right, and it fails because it's not doing anything. So at this point we have a choice. We can put the information in here that we need uh, in the body of this method to make that thing pass, but now our document is going to have to know all about the rules and whatnot for the users that are going to uh, be using it. So let's move this to another thing. Let's create some folder for tests. Let's try and remember that this is the one that has my to-do list. All right, so back in document. Oh, this one's got the to-do list also. Interesting. We'll drop it out of there. Now we want to create another class that's going to be a proxy of our document. All right, so we can have a couple options here. We can either have an iDocument interface or a base document abstract type that we're going to inherit from, uh, and then both the document and the protected proxy will inherit from it. Um, or we can just inherit directly from a document. So I'm going to do that. So we can say public class protected document inherits from document. And it's going to require most of these things be virtual in order for them to work. Uh, at least to be able to, to be modified. Um, maybe. We'll see. But definitely update name needs to be virtual. So 